Welcome back to Dyson Share Program. My name is Nilaus and we have now re reached another achievement and we're going to be back to achievement hunting today in this episode, firing on all cylinders, unlock upgrade to decrease the mineral mining consumption rate to less than 15%. That has now been achieved and uh, that is a good testament to the fact that our science, if you just dis discount this part, the science is actually working somewhat. And for that reason, we've also uh, decided to leave the science tennis ball planet and uh, move on to another planet. So where we are for context, we are out in this beautiful system. This is a Sergeant Dubious system. It's all the way on the outskirts of the, the galaxy cluster, star cluster here. And we have a beautiful, beautiful design here for this uh, science, uh, for the Dyson Sphere. And uh, because of that, we have, let's go out here. We have a lot of gigawatts of power. And that means we. this is a good place for us to start working. So what we're going to be working on today is getting the, the Let There Be Light achievement. Let's have a look at it while we are here. There will be some achievements that you will be... Here it is. Let There Be Light. Light an artificial star on the north and south pole of the original planet, an ice field galaxy planet, and the eternal night side of a tight locked planet. We will be doing that today. That means we are going to make a farm for critical photons because we need that for our science we were sort of assuming that we had enough but we know we don't have enough so that's what we're going to build then we are going to make antimatter we are going to make the annihilation spheres so we can make the suns we are going to make antimatter fuel and that's going to be then we're going to be placing it so i'm going to use this planet uh, first thing i'm going to do is uh, gather some stuff and then find a good place to build it all right this may as well be a good time to get back into the game uh, we can make it if we try. That is excellent. We have now a Dyson Sphere around the Red Giant with a power generation performance of at least 10 gigawatts of power. Let's have a look at which one that is. It is one of our newest systems, Magistars. There we go. And let's build that here. That is the Scarab or Turtle, the World Turtle. It's Turtle all the way down. See if you got that literary reference. And what we're going to do is the, we will use this space for our design work. But the first thing we want to do is if we look at this design here. What are you doing? You're not doing anything. Uh, we're going to use that actually. So what we have here is a nice design that just make converts the power in this awesome sphere into power here. But we actually wanted to, we don't need that much power, but we do need a lot of critical photons. So what I'm going to do is yeah, it kind of sucks. <laughs> we are going to uh, take all of this out. And that's why we want this tower to uh, to be available. Then what I'm going to do is I am going to delete all of this. Unfortunately, I have to because I need to build a new design that I have prepared that will be doing 60... Yeah, 60 critical photons per second because that's what I want to build for our science build because the science build needs 30 per second, so if I build it this one towards 60, one of these towards 60, then I'll be definitely be having enough. So let us uh, do this. Uh, we are unfortunately going to have a lot of stuff on the ground, so we'll be uh, just deleting this. And this is what I knew was going to happen. That's why we have this tower nearby. And unfortunately, what this also means is this is the entirety of our power on this planet. So we will absolutely destroy the power. Yep, we'll just grab all of it now that we can. And you go, no, 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 not that one. This tower that we have uh, prepared in advance so that we could move things in here. And I can take out here. Hopefully not too much. And we will then clean up. And it's all, all clean. We can now put it into this location again. Store it. Yeah, all of it is stored. So we are going to get a blueprint. And oh, this one is a bit of annoying to build. So uh, you just copy it from my website and then you'll be happy. That one. All right. Uh, it's also really weird in the sense that how it's designed. If I want it to be there. So we have now placed it. So what is this? Now what we're seeing here is this is where we are getting and uh, to make sure that we don't get there. 
We need to make sure that we first and foremost, in here, we get this part and then we get all of this part. Thank you. Don't even get that. And so we want to make sure that we get all of this done. Right. So what happens now is that out here, we will send the green lenses. They will be proliferated because proliferated green lenses, if we can triple proliferate it, which unfortunately it is not, well, some of it. But some of it, if it gets pro triple proliferated, it actually gets plus 300% max output instead of plus 200%. So massive, massive output uh, increase. So that's definitely something we want to do here. Uh, it'll just take a bit of time to sort of equalize and I will put it there and there. Okay, so that is now inbound and it'll be collecting critical photons both for local and global supply now we actually want to build two of these we want to build one that is dedicated to only providing into the science facility and then we want to build this one which is only pro dedicated to providing into the antimatter build that being said we're gonna have so much extra here compared to how much we're being we will consume that I don't feel that it is necessary we can just set this one to both provide local and global and then I can build another one and I already will build another one. If we look out here, we have the biggest sphere that we have is in the complete opposite direction. Ah, it is out here. This one is the biggest sphere. And if we look at it over at the NASA system, there we go. It is uh, 171 gigawatt, gigawatt of power. And we have to get all of this all the way up to one terawatt of power before that's probably gonna be the last achievement we get, the hardest achievement. Yep. And we are getting all of this will now be done. Good. So the question, is it generating enough power? No, not even close. But that it will get there as our solar sails here go out, or as what is it called, our green lenses go out, then this one will increase up here and then we will gradually soon-ish have it. One thing that I haven't done yet, but I will do is I want to make sure that when this one is failing on power, then it's also failing to put triple chevrons on things, which again means that these are not performing as efficiently as they can, which again means that there's going to be less power, which again means that this one's not going to work. So you kind of have a, a catch 22 that if this one was 100%, then this one would give 100% and then this one would be 100%, but it's not. So we kind of have to sort of let it just work for a bit and just hope gradually that it will improve and I'm pretty sure it will. Um, yeah, so the thing is, these ones that are set to critical photons... Oh yeah, you know what, I, I, need, I don't need 60 here at this location, I need much less. So what I can do my very easily is I can simply take some of those outbound ones out here and then uh, restructure it so that basically this one is not doing Graviton lenses. Uh, where is it? I know I have some of these that are set to power generation. Yes. So if I take the one with power generation, that one and that one, and then I'd say, you know what? This line here will now be working on power instead of working on, uh, what are they called? Critical photons, because we don't need that many critical photons in this location. We do need it over at the NATSAL system, but at this point we don't actually need it. So I might as well convert some of these back again you can now see a bit of a difference I think that they've changed it because I used to not be able to tell the difference whether they were you know, they were doing one or the other but if you look at it now it's clear, clear that this, these here are power and that one is solar power solar or critical photons yeah so we'll do the outer one as well there and with these extra lanes out, then I'm pretty sure we have all we need to, all the power we need to feed this location. Come on, get all the way up there. I'm getting stuck inside this location here. This will of course lower the amount of critical photons, but it all really doesn't matter at this point because I just need 30 and this is a design that I made to make 60. I've already set it up on the Natsal system, so that's all good so I know that it works I mean you have to test it before applying it here 
Right, so how much do we have now? We have one, two lanes plus that one. How many do we have on this lane? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, fifteen, something. Yeah, thirty plus times two, that's sixty. And one, that's another here, that's seventy. And each one is when it's fully operational. I believe it's making twenty-four per second, uh, twenty-four per minute. I think. Let's let's just casually assume that it's twenty-four per minute. Uh, so that is 24 divided by 60 and then times 70 that's 28 that is perfect that's 28 that's exactly what I wanted 28 per second and then if I actually want to make it exactly 30 which I do because things have to be exactly 30 and I will then export them not externally because we already have one that's exporting internally that means hmm how much did they do each I need to convert they're doing 0 0.4 each. I will convert. There. Good. Now these... F doesn't look good. Good. Okay, let's see. These are now power. All of the outdown lane is power. But I'm going to take range utilization. Thank you very much. Here. Right. So now I have photon generation. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's going to be the ever so slightly sur surplus. Perfect. All right. We now have 30... Uh, critical photons per second. Do we have enough power? We have enough power for everything that is perfect and it's time for us to start working on the critical photons. Uh, working on the critical photons to turn that into something more useful such as antimatter and then annihilation spheres and all that good stuff. Now let's have a look at this. Luckily someone has already both prepared the location and also prepared some designs for us. The first thing we want to do is make a 30 I 31 here. Uh, this one is going into that location. First thing we want to do is convert it here. Uh, can you just wait a second? Don't want to get that just yet. One. We want to build all of these at once because there is something really important about this design. This design here is making a exact right number of antimatter and hydrogen in order for us to put it back into here because this needs the same amount. So if I start, if I have any other hydrogen on this planet, the, the ratio will be screwed. If I do any kind of sort of uh, take any of the hydrogen in or out here, I'm screwed. <laughs> it's it's really susceptible. But if I don't do that, well, 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 then we'll actually have a really good situation where we can actually get this. So I'd actually like to not transport these by drones, but actually transport them by, by belts. And that's what we're going to do. This one will be taking consuming, if you can see here, every two seconds. It takes two inbound and provides two outbound. So that is uh, 30 in, 30 out. That's a good build. What I'm going to do out here, and this is uh, important, I have a little stacker at this location because my outbound belt for... It's really weird, but my outbound belt here... I have two outbound belts for antimatter and one outbound belt for hydrogen. But this outbound belt will be 30 on this belt, and if I put a 30 on belt, uh, the belts... The sorters cannot fully saturate a belt like they can in Factorio. So you have to make sure that there is always room for this one to output on the belt. And if it has to output the 30th on a 30 capacity belt, it's not going to be fitting. So what I do is I looped it around and put it back in here. The reason why I did that is because I need this space here. Otherwise, I would have just taken this one and went it in here. But I need that space. So once we have the antimatter, let's have a look at what the antimatter can do. We can't jump straight into this because we need the annihilation spheres. Uh, actually, we don't. We do need the antimatter fuel rods. That's what we're building next. And then we can do the, the annihilation spheres from the other side. So let's uh, go in here, find some antimatter, uh, antimatter fuel, this part. And I'll be going through sort of how big it is and why. 
that one. So what do we have here is 40. This will give us 625 per minute second. 625 per second. Why is this number uh, particularly good? Well, I don't know. I think it just fits. If we look at it, each one of these is consuming. Let's see, it's consuming every 24 seconds it consumes 12. So that means every two seconds it consumes one. If I have 40 of these divided by two, that's 20 times the crafting speed of 1.5. That means this one is exactly using every single bit of resource we are having, we, use, we are producing up here. So that's excellent. This is using all of it. Then it will also on top of that be, um, be using two and a half annihilation spheres per second. What I have done here is I'm taking it in here and this will be proliferated on the outbound uh, or the inbound will be proliferated here. And then I'm also storing it. The reason I'm storing it is because I don't really want to transport like 2000 antimatter fuel to anywhere I want it. I want to transport up to 200 because that would be enough for us. Now what I can do is if I'm coming out from this location, then this is the hydrogen. So I can take out hydrogen out here. And then I can take antimatter out here. And then I've actually consolidated it into these locations. And then I don't need to do any kind of transport. This one will never even be here. And what we can do, oh, this one already got some stuff. Interesting. Huh. Um, let's, oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should, uh, I should show that. <laughs> the funny thing is this planet is actually the one that's making the titanium alloy. So it's perfect that I'm requesting it here. This is my global supply of titanium alloy. Is It just happens to be on this planet. Now, we don't have anything that is warping because we're not warping anything yet. Uh, oh, this one is warping. What? Uh, yeah, okay. So if you are having warpers, then I'm also going to take my warpers out here. And that gets the warpers into this location, which is important. All right. And I will get some more drones, I think. Yep. All right, so the next thing we want to do, ah, nighttime, is look at the annihilation sphere, that one. So how many annihilation spheres do I need? Well, I needed two and a half for my antimatter fuel build, but I also need some to go back home to to build some uh, to build some annihilation spheres. So I decided that, well, this is on a 20 second cycle, and then I built 40, then it's the same length as the other one that seems to be fitting really well. So I built 40, that means I produced three per second. And then of course the proliferation and with proliferation, I built 375 and two of them, two and a half goes in here. That means there should be an average of 1.25 remaining for wherever we want it. Now this part here, this is the return. Going back here, um, let's make sure that you go there and you go there. These are being requested, these are being requested, it's all good. And uh, this one should be first. In any case, yeah. What we are not seeing is out. Oops, here. There we go. So let's get warpers in there as well. They are done now. But what I'd like to do is actually take this part out. Because if I... If I do this... I don't think that works. Here. Now that will be... Filtering it in, half goes in here so that it can be available to pick up and the other half goes in here. At that point, it'll just have 100 and then it'll just pass along and then goes out here. So again, we are not transporting any of this, any of the alliance spheres by drones. We are simply transporting them. You can see that now they're starting to build slowly, but they are working. Some of them oops, go in here and some go in here. And the ones that go in here will start working. Well, they won't because uh, I have not set this one up and not allowed it to request. And as soon as we do that, we will get stuff requested in. I actually wanted all of the other things coming first because this is the, the motor for pacing it. And we can see a lot, a lot of stuff coming in. There we go. And it should be going out on this belt. Oh yeah, very bright. The photons are bright, hmm, <laughs> not surprising. And it goes back. And then it goes straight through. And as long as I never pick anything up and I never 
do anything else, then that balance, that ratio will be perfect. So from there on, don't do anything. Just let it let it flow through. It will of course take a while because it has to flow all the way through and all the way around. And the first ones will be the greedy ones. They'll be picking up as much as they can. But it all, all known, it really doesn't matter because I will get it and then I'll put out on the outside belt, which will go all the way around and eventually be put into this box and then be put back out of the box and into here as well. So let's uh, wait for that to come in. We are seeing these huffing and puffing, so they should be working. I see the first stuff coming out here. Ta-da, we got the first here, triple proliferated. If you are asking why I'm triple proliferating it, it is because, look at this, this is 1100% fuel chamber generation. Yummy. And this one only has 380. Eh. So definitely this is what we want to do. As you can see, we are just easily, and once we have that, the amount of fuel in this one is 720 gigajoule. I don't think we'll ever really need it. And uh, friendship with deuterium fuel has ended, and now uh, antimatter is my best friend. Look at that. Yay. Right, so this is one thing. This is then another thing. What are we going to use it for? We are going to use it for making some antimatter. Uh, and uh, so the artificial sun. So the here we already have 200. This one is set to 100 transport. I really should set it to only 10% transport. Guess I don't really need to transport that much. Also really don't want to be transporting that much like why is it not just going like 500 or something just get just give me 500 and then this one will be 25 percent 20 percent yeah 20 percent is 400 so it'll go out from here if there's less than 400 perfect this is working you can see that only this part here still has yellow belts and that's because simply the feeding line here and one thing that I, I am kind of thinking about here is this is, oh, this is fully stacked. So the reason why this belt looks sort of empty is because it is stacked. That's good. So it's stacked out here and gradually this one now started working because it got all the stuff that it wants. Getting more in. It looks like it's a bit unbalanced, but I don't think it is unbalanced. I think it's just because we, whatever is like on the closest belt will be grabbed first. But we can see now there's only four of them that are not working. Anyway, this is working brilliantly if you want this blueprint so that you can build 6.25 antimatter per second plus an additional, on top of what you need here, 1.25 annihilation spheres per second, all self-contained, then this is what you want to do. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to my central hub at starving. This is Tegivaro, and then we're going to go back to starving here. And at that location, we are going to just, we are just going to take, oh, look at that. It's already fully saturated. I'm going to take all of this because we're a bit greedy in that regard. And we are now going to fly back home. So that at the home station, we can now set up the construction of artificial suns. And then we can build those four artificial suns we need for the Let There Be Light achievement. And I haven't said this in a while, but as uh, I have a tradition, when we are in hyperspace, that's the time when I thank the patrons for supporting the channel. So thank you very much if you are a patron and supporting the channel. If you are not a patron, that is perfectly okay. You are welcome to watch and like and subscribe and just uh, enjoy it as much as you like. But if you want to do something extra, then I have a patron linked in the description below if you want to support there. Let's jump on back to the home planet. Here we go. We are back at the orange. Now this planet is a mess. I liked it when I built it, but now that when I look at it, I'm like, ah, this is a mess. There's nothing, all of this, like, what is this doing even? Ah, man, I just, I just don't look at it. What I am going to look at is in here, we have some artificial suns and they will be requesting. Uh, they will only be requesting when we have enough. So what if I do that one? Yeah. Why are we not getting this inb inbound yet? Hmm. So I decided to change my tactic from just glaring at it to um, to actually just setting it to remote demand instead of local demand. And you know, after a while, then it actually turned out to be a quite a successful strategy change by recording recruiting it remotely since it is remotely provided, remotely pro produced. 
So what do you know, it actually seems to be a good idea. So this uh, automatically starts up uh, with the production and we have the very first of these. Yay! So let's uh, plop this down just anywhere. Uh, it's not actually on this planet that it is, has to be placed, but ta-da! And we get the artificial sun. That is the very last one. You built a Dyson sphere with a huge power output of 343 gigawatt and antimatter fuel rods from the star. Okay, that is the last of these milestones that we uh, we have for this location. Uh, so now we have 42 or 42 milestones. That was the last one we were missing. It is looks. It does look beautiful. It has a bit of an annoying sound, but it looks beautiful. Um. So, and we have one more. We are going to need four of these for what we need because we have a number of specific locations we need to go to. It says the, it says that you have to go to the original planet and place it at the north and south pole. You have to go to a ice field Gallisol, and you have to find the dark side of a tidal lock planet. So we will find those locations once we have four of these. Then we will go there. What I also want to do though is uh, make sure that they actually keep working by just making sure that we put something in here. They 144 power. Yeah, that's because we are using using this. That produces a stupid amount of power. And we have all four of these, and I can now take you out. There, those four. Not necessarily need to be placed next to each other, but that is still where we want to go. And I need to go out here, away from my starving planet, and towards closer here. And we go to Gyna Cube. Gyna Cube is an awful, awful mess of a planet right now. This I have just completely left it. But I guarantee you, if you want... Oops, I overshot it. If you are following this series, and uh, if maybe even you are following on Twitch, you do know that I'm streaming this on Twitch as well, right? Uh, then it's at Twitch TV slash Nilos. It's... What is it? Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I think? And then I do have a, a very ambitious plans for this location. So, North and South Pole. Let's build it there. Do we have... Yeah, we have a tiny bit here. So this is going to be tricky. A bit tricky, at least. Uh, because... Well, yeah, I can actually take this out without any problems. Why can we take it out? Well, because the Dyson Sphere is done and we don't need anything else. So I can put, put you here. I can put a nice fat 30 stack in here. That should last a while. Should. Hopefully long enough for me to get the other locations so it doesn't run out. We'll use a 30 stack on, on each of those. And then we go all the way up here to the North Pole. No. There. Yep. And that will be another one. Exactly North Pole. You get this. And if we are lucky, then it should actually list the achievement progress. If we look at the one's achievement progress, let there be light. Oh yeah, this one is not lit up because there's nothing that demands power from it. There. And if we look at progress, two out of four, great. So now I need to find the Icefield Galisol. And I've been looking at it, and I know it out here, and out here. Calmarin is an Eidfield Galisol, and that's the closest one we have. So we are going to leap out there and place it at that location. Once we have that location, then we just need to go to the final one. So let's warp there. Here we are. We have landed on this planet. And we might as well build it in the middle. Oh no, what is this mess? Huh. I must have thought that was important at some point. And we built it here. I can actually, at this point, request... I don't know why I want that, but I can. There. Oh, we got another research. Nice. It's funny that they, they are not 
able to go directly in. They have to be... Oops. And that's not powered. And here we'll do that. Does that mean I have to... Yeah, then it has a little sphere around it so it can power that one by itself. Uh, are you coming in? I don't know. It seems a weird way of doing this. I have to basically rely on before this runs out, this has to get in here. Yeah, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be doing a gamble. Cool. And the last one is, I have also taken note of that because I found, we found one tidal lock planet that is over at the Natsos system here. And it is the one that's called Magmaril C. That one. Yeah, I haven't really used it for anything because the whole idea of a tidal lock planet, people, some people love it, but mine, my designs are revolving around a, well, a revolving planet. So. Anyway, we are going to go there. See you in a little warp's time. I decided to change our destination in route and we changed it to go to this magistrate's location. And why do we do that? Because I wanted to show you the full build of this is where we built the full build of uh, of critical photons. This is producing 60 critical photons per second and it's just chugging along. It's really nice. And I just felt that, hey, I said that I had built it, so I want to show you that it is being built out of these bright lights. And let's actually look at production statistics for the local planet. And what do we have? What do we have here? That is very, very accurate 3600 per minute. Very, very nice to see. All right, cool. I just wanted to show you just to, to see that it works. Not not only that I built it, but also that it actually works in the way that it was intended when you set it up. But the other one is now intended to only deliver 30. And this that one is the, the one we first built at the start of the video. That's only now designed to break 30 and only make it locally. Now here is, uh, this is our planet. We have never landed on it before. And we go to the dark side. What time is it? Find and land on a planet with the day and night tidal locked. Ah, oh, didn't even know we didn't have that one. So we're just going to be building here on the permanent dark side. And all we need to do is... Ah, right. It doesn't work until you actually have something that requires input. So we'll do this. Ta-da! Let there be light. Well, there is light in darkness. And... Uh, that's basically uh, the achievement for, for us today. We have now built antimatter, we've built critical photons, we've built the artificial suns, so we now have the artificial suns. I have no intention of just using these everywhere, at least not yet. I think they're cool, but I don't think they are... Um, I, I think they're also a bit too good, basically, so I, I don't really want to use them that much. Anyway, uh, we have lots of interesting things to do. I have some uh, rework, some designs. We have some uh, new consolidated designs. And then I have a mega project of a, a distribution crosstalk hub. So tons of things more in this series. Don't you worry. So make sure that you like the video to show that uh, you want me to continue. Subscribe to the channel so that you can uh, keep up with all the new stuff that comes along. And then I will see you guys on the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. Until then, take care and stay effective.